thing. Ooh, seven hours. I did not sleep long. Because I woke up and went to Walmart. And bullshitted on the internet for a while. Alright, going inside. I have the option to leave? No. Couldn't leave if I wanted to. I do kind of want to. Alright. Why does it do that? This island reeks with malevolence. I Too imagine it's malevolence. emanating from all the big old demons roaming about. Excuse me, you're kind of my way. Fuck, 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 fuck. Are we ready for this? Turn around and see, is it still following me? Uh, I guess the answer was yes. Phew. Already, first battle coming back, it already didn't let me fucking theorize. Or theranize, whatever the fucking word is. And hit me with the status effect. Hey, it finally let me do it. Just had to put me in a bad mood right off. I'm also annoyed because these two ladies in front of me at Walmart today. Holy shit. It took them a good... 10 minutes before finally they just, this is, you know, early in the morning, so no one there. And they took like 10 minutes before finally the lady got on the phone, called another person to open up a register. You know, and, you know, another couple minutes for that to happen. So I'm standing there, probably damn near 15 minutes total before another lane opens up. And then I went through and I got done. They were still at the checkout. And it wasn't the checkout lady's fault, I know, because it's Lena, who I have pretty much any time I go to Walmart, because she's the only one working at 4 in the morning. Yeah, so that was a thing. I, I, don't, I just cannot stand people that can't get their business handled at the checkout at Walmart. They didn't even look like they were drunk or anything, which, you know, you get that at 4 a.m. They seemed like they were sober, just stupid and slow, like... Put all your shit on the thing. Don't keep it there in your cart while she's checking out. And then when it came to pay, it was, so I need a hundred dollars on this card. And then um, can you see how much is left on it after that? And then I might want to pay another forty on it. Holy shit! Show them how. Yes, I've checked out with food stamps and a credit card before, and I've never once been like, oh, hold on, hold on. Only do I buy less than what I have on the card. I make it simple. I always make an easy transaction for all parties involved. Hey, it's you again. Figure there'd be one of these here uh, since so I can't busy. leave. I'm so busy I can't even notice what's going on around me. You're not fooling anybody. Why bother? I was hoping to not have to deal with you guys. Whenever I run into you, I always lose so much money. Because Velvet always forces unreasonable demands on you? Oh, Miss Exorcist! Your concern warms my little turtle's heart. I'm not forcing anything. 
I just think he's trying to take advantage of us by fixing his prices well above market rate. Price fixing? As in deliberately marking up items so as to take advantage of the less fortunate? I was under the impression that the Abbey strictly forbade such unscrupulous business tactics. Ah! Perish the thought, Miss. Our accounting is always above board. 25 hours a day, 8 days a week. No matter whens and no matter wheres, you can get whatever you need for the same fair price. That's good to hear. Eleanor, give the nice turtles that smile he so desires. I'm sure running a business is hard work. Hang in there. M much obliged. <laughs> And now I have a place to come get more. Oh, your shit. I heard someone pop up on the chair right behind me. She's staring at the back of my head waiting for me to give her attention, but I look back, she's just licking herself. I keep one thing of everything, even if I have no intention of using it, just in case. Once I can actually level them up to higher, higher levels, maybe they'll. Oh no, that's. Uh, good. Maybe. Thank <laughs> you. 
You know what you're getting? Mean to do that, but I actually do kind of want to look at this. <laughs> Nowhere near touching that button. In fact, I've been in a battle in a while, and that's the only time I do hit that button. So, extra weird. It's not like it was, you know, stuck in waiting to pop out. I don't like my cat standing on the keyboard and is hitting the keyboard command for it, whatever that is. On the chair behind me. Not fucking with my shit for a change. Of course I say that, she's gonna decide to move.
at the what? Start of battle. Eh. Well, considering sometimes I've been bullshitted at the start of battle, I don't mind that as a thing. And you could learn it, then double up and have six seconds. Probably one of the most useless double up ones you can do. One wing done. Go. Been through here before, and I already know the chest is down that one way. Probably just go down that one way. Getting three, four of these things is not that important. But who knows what's lurking? There could be an NPC. Well, no, they'd be marked too. They'd have a little green marker or an exclamation point. It shouldn't be NPCs or. Be a cracked wall I missed earlier. That's a potential thing. So I will double scope them out. Now that, uh, fear of missing out the kids are always talking about. I don't think we have a chance. Right, right into it. If I'm gonna do a fight purposely, it's gonna be with the ghosty guys, because they fall apart like nothing. These things... pain in the ass. But having so much life. Goddamn game and it's sponges. Oh yeah, we got a hundred hours of content, because 50 of it will be spent fucking killing shit that takes way too long instead of way too much life. I refuse to fall here. Okay, this is the very first place, so if this still hasn't respawned. I don't think they do respawn. I think the game lied to me. We have to unlock it in New Game Plus or some shit. Why did I die? I didn't even see myself get hit once. Oh, 
Stay with the fucking laser light show, who knows what I got hit by. I can't see shit. You know, I have Mystic Art ready, so thanks for that. Not being able to see shit. Yeah, that was <laughs> from the way you were talking, it seemed like you had an idea of who was behind the riot. What happened here? I think someone in your position would know. There were reports of a large riot, but I was caught up in chasing you, so I heard little else. It was a small affair, really. Velvet Rokuro and I were being held on this island. Velvet instigated the other prisoners to riot so that we could escape. She used the prisoners? Yeah. You'd expect different from me? <sighs> How did it end? We didn't stay to see, but the prisoners were losing badly. At least, that's what it looked like. But if that was the case, then where did all the exorcists go? Oh, I know Oscar though. left to report the incident, but the other guards should have remained at their posts. Well, if they didn't flee, we have to assume they were all killed. By this headless knight, perhaps? Well, no sense losing our heads, I suppose. <coughs> but it looks like we're in for a heck of a fight. All we have to do is hand. mop up anyone who's left. What was it called? <coughs> Venomization, right? The dark ritual of making demons feed on each other to birth stronger ones. Aizen, how many demons does the ritual require? It's more a matter of quality than quantity. Stronger demons mean more powerful malevolence. The ritual mixes the victor's malevolence with that of the devoured, creating a terrible, bloodthirsty monster. You see, the newfound power comes at a great cost. With it, the victor's last vestiges of self-control are stripped away. So it's something even more than a monster. A seething ball of pure power and malevolence. More monster than a monster. Don't tell me you're considering it for yourself. Of course I am. I <clears throat> consider anything that can make me stronger. You cannot be serious! What's there to be so surprised about? <coughs> Look at Velvet. She's already eaten countless demons. You're ridiculous! He's right. If it helps me find my vengeance, I don't care. Velvet? Wait, are you really going to do it? Relax, it's not gonna happen. Becoming a monster wouldn't bother me, but when I defeat my rival, I have to be myself for it to mean anything. It's the same for Velvet. It is? Besides, if I kill a previous victor of the ritual, I'll have proved myself strong enough not to need the extra power. You're ridiculous. <laughs> Scouch. Sword <laughs> was right. Back to the starting part of the game. Hit. The product of the venomization. Well, he definitely looks vicious enough. <laughs> Not as vicious as our velvet, though. Hey, 
Thanks for the hype. Where's his voice even coming from? I don't know. Look inside. It's hard. On the cigar. Oh, that coming. Souls, anyways. Pretty easy. Here's a really telegraph. Me getting hit by him is pretty much just laziness. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. I feel something again. More malevolence? No, another Earth Pulse point. It must be on this island. I sense it too. It's very close. Directly underneath us, I would guess. Sounds about right. First Therian, the test subject. What is this place? Welcome to the most secure cell in the entire complex. The darkest hole in Titania. Feel anything, Lafayette? Yeah, I think this is the Earth Pulse Point. If this cell is where the Earth Pulse Point is, then does that mean it housed a Therian? Yeah, and a real hungry one at that. Every day. They would toss demons into its cell. It would devour its fill, then wipe the blood from its lips. Never once realizing it was delivering to Enominot the malevolence of hundreds of demons and prisoners. And then one day, there appeared before it a female Moloch, who shattered the barrier and freed the Therian from its cage. But the Therian knew no mercy. And it devoured its liberator. And it was then. Not how it happened. It was then I obtained the power. The power to avenge my brother. Velvet, you're a Therian? Good. This prison island was a feeding ground for the Therian. 
harnessing the malevolence created by the prisoners within. Why is he but acting like that's Velvet news? Escaped, it's been mentioned countless the times. Went out of control. Wow, the same darn thing that happened back in Kamoana's village. Lord Artorius would never have done such a thing. No, what's so unbelievable? That he used his wife's brother as a human sacrifice? That he imprisoned his wife's sister? Because that's what your damned Holy Shepherd did! All to get his hands on Inominat's power! I'm sure he... he had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain! Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair? He murdered my little brother, Loppy! And you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! Hey, a motion for a change. At any rate, that's one less Therian for us to track down. Velvet. Yeah, so you get three out of eight. Come uh. on! What? Did Velvet yell at you so hard you're starting to hear voices now? I have a feeling something's wrong. Kamoana could be in danger. But we already beat the Headless Knight. I still can't shake this feeling. Please, let's go back and check on them. Secret loot in here? Come on. Take the elevator back up. Inconvenient. What about a warp portal? What about that? Right, I, I, I didn't so check out every direction. Velvet is a Therian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Laffy said, Is Velvet truly Lord Artorius' younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorius' training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey, Velvet, what's your connection to Artorius? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorius was married to my late sister, Selica. He was our brother-in-law. We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother and turned his sister into a Therian. By marriage. You were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. Okay, they just dropped the pretense on that one. Like, they've danced around it a few times. That one was straight up the quote from Spock. They've said almost that a few times. I think that was the first time they straight up went Vulcan and even put quotes around it. Uh, okay, it wasn't the exact quote because he didn't say, or the one, or she didn't say. Needs of many outweigh the needs of the few, or the one. So, they're safe from being sued. That or the one's important. doing? Why you stand in front of my screen like that? Because by the screaming, I might not have another boss battle and I'd prefer to actually see like all the screen. Ooh. 
Mark down the map now. Nope. I probably won't be coming back for whatever's in that box, cause tedious. You fucker. I cannot see my bowl, my bowls, my souls. Can't see my bowls of souls. Uh, oh, I see is a cat licking herself. You take a bath anywhere. Does it have to be right in front of my screen? I also can't see the slot too. Whatever's in that slot stuff. Not that it matters. Just, just mentioning how much screen space he takes up. This fight is over. The blue at the front of the screen. No, oh, it was her. I was gonna say, but I have no idea who was on because I couldn't see the rest of it. But make sure there wasn't more than one. Okay. Taking a drop in power going with this blade, but that's fine. <laughs> You're flexible as shit, girl. So it turns out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies, turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Enominot through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorius. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Ugh. So we got a Mr. Ed reference on top of the Star Trek reference. What a reference from the last 30 years. How about that? Couple life bottles, right? I can't remember which way I came from. Ah, that was Kamoana. That's going everywhere. This horseman. Kamoana. Fight. Really came back bits. for me. A promise is a promise, sweetheart. A headless knight and a horse demon. It's giving off a ton of malevolence. This must be the true survivor of the venomization process. Thought the last fight was too easy. Oh, I get it. 
The dying exorcist lady wasn't saying Headless Knight is back. She was going for Headless Knight on horseback. Whatever the case, we'll fight whoever we have to to claim this island. This is my house. Now I can't help but wonder how the horse is named. Get close and look if you're that curious. Come on. Let me use my mystic guard. You don't care. Hey. That's food. No, I can't. Wasn't even looking. My cat started trying to eat something that is not food. Not food. Here, let me get you some treats so you stop trying to eat shit that isn't food. Silly cat. Oh, and did I call it on the name? Dullahan. Or even saw it, I called the name. I mean, sure, anyone who's played more than two RPGs could probably have called that same name. But I'm the one who did. I have played more than two RPGs. Change up my combo a little bit because the end parts aren't doing much. The physical attacks in general. What else are you into? Armor, I'm assuming. Armor, undead, beam, resistance, the earth and wind. A good physical combo. Like a straight up physical combo. Let's turn this into one. Uh, I like what it is now. What about B? I don't like my B combo. Perfect. This should be chain of four things. And close together. my strategy. I'm going to activate when I hit triggers. I 
Could, uh, sell the heal. Be a great. Oh, I thought he was done. Apparently not. Did you steal my soul, you bitch? Why will you not activate? Why do you hate me? I figured since the one isn't activating, I'd try the other. Hey, now this one goes. I guess stun doesn't count as a status effect. It just now activated my food. And I've been stunned however many times in this fight. You want your belly, bro? I'll rub your belly in just a minute, honey. I'll rub your belly in a minute. And then you'll attack me. I know how this goes. There you go. There you go. Kill that monster so I can pet you. That's venomization, all right. Definitely stronger than that headless lump of armor. I beg your pardon. Not you. <laughs> Demon from the villa? No, look, it's absorbing the malevolence. It's Ethereum. Yeah, well, the demon from the Actually, villa. Actually, that open. hawk is Griffin, my one and only friend. <laughs> A damned Therian. So that's what Tabitha meant when she said we'd find out shortly. Right, so got four. Why do you have a Therian? It's like I said, Griffin has been my dear friend ever since I was a child. Even if he's a Therian now, that hasn't changed. So you knew you were helping a Therian escape. What are you plotting? <sighs> I have no plots or schemes. I just want Griffin to be free. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The crown prince and future king, he's gonna do whatever he likes. <laughs> I suppose I am at that. But if I am... It's the first time I've ever been allowed a choice of my own. When you're a prince, you're not a person. You're an institution, one designed to serve the state and its people. Say, for instance, you're doing your law studies and your back suddenly itches. What do you do? I mean, I'd scratch it. Who wouldn't? When I did that, my tutor gave me a whipping so hard the blood ran down my back. The reason being that I prioritized a personal feeling, that is to say, my itch, over my studies in service of the state. Uh. Seeing Griffin lay claim to the skies, let me imagine my own freedom. It was my lone solace over the years. But then, 
He turned out to be responsive to Inominat's power. I take it the Midgand royal family is well aware that the Abbey is creating Therians? Of course. How could we not? The Kingdom offers unequivocal support to Shepherd Artorius's vision of reason and will. Even so, if there was one thing I could never permit, it was seeing Griffin locked up and unable to fly. Never. I tricked the Exorcist on guard and disabled the barrier. But then Griffin attacked the Exorcist and killed him. That's why you said you could never go back. Eh, they can overlook a single dead Exorcist. But with Etherian removed, Malevolence will engulf the capital. I knew full well what I was doing. And yet... I couldn't watch my friend's life be stripped away. Your Highness... He chose a single bird over the world. Why do you think that birds fly? That's what Lord Artorius asked me. My anatomy book says birds can fly because their bones are light and their wing muscles are enormously strong. Birds fly because a bird that cannot fly is no bird at all. Still a bird. Look at penguins. I understand now. As long as you remain on this island, you may do as you please. But if you try to escape, I'll kill you. That should work. This way we'll have him on hand if we ever need a hostage. Understood. I appreciate you letting Griffin and me stay here. Well, now that that's taken care of, let's build ourselves a hideout. Be cool if we actually built a hideout and it was functioning and stuff. I'm sure it's not going to be that. I don't see this game having that kind of, a uh, depth. If they added a base building aspect, I would be impressed. Hey, Velvet, do you know where Ellen Especially is? Especially if it was good. Wasn't she just playing with you? Yeah, but then she left. I'm worried because she looked pretty sad. Rating. Can you go find her? Why me? Mm. <sighs> all right, all right, fine. Just don't cry on me, okay? That voice and the noises it makes, it sends like a shiver down my spine of annoyance. Hey, Rokuro, have you seen Eleanor? Uh, probably. I don't know. <sighs> Bit drunk. <laughs> Just try not to go overboard. But, man, are we a bunch of screw-ups or what? I mean, we've kidnapped a prince now. They gotta have laws against that. Broke out of prison, flattened Helovis, tried to assassinate a shepherd. Hey, how many infractions do you think we're on the hook for? Pardon me if I don't stop and count. If you don't like it, nobody's forcing you to tag along. No, I still haven't repaid my debt to you. You say that, but you really just want to beat Shigure, don't you? Whoa, to me, they're both connected. It's a long story, but I can tell you if you... I'll pass. Well, join me for a drink then? Can't. I'm 19. <laughs> That's what's up. A most interesting interpretation. What do you make of this part here, then? Hmm. Well, if you pronounce it Loney Kyle, then it'd mean Midriff, which probably isn't right. Maybe Muse Mila? Well, that would make this passage read, Porges are nummy. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not right either. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong, Velvet? Have you seen Eleanor? No, I haven't. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to watch her. Just read somewhere where there's more light. 
You'll hurt your eyes like this. Uh, okay. For the read in the dark. You haven't been around the docks. Ooh. Hey, you got any idea where Eleanor is? No, sorry. I was having a meeting with Benwick and the crew about our search for Eifried. Are you sure you're okay with putting that off? At this point... The Abbey doesn't have much reason to keep him alive. Wouldn't you rather look for him than Therians? I know time is a factor, but we still don't have any decent leads. I think we need to stir up the Abbey and see what shakes loose. And who better to do that than you? So this works for both of us, then? Never fear. I'm still acting out of self-interest. Besides, Eifried won't die so easily. He's a strong man. It'd take a lot to bring him down. How do you know? Yeah. You've never met him. I've never seen him flinch from a storm, no matter how choppy the seas. Where angels fear to tread, as they say. <laughs> Probably some of that as well. Game's got a lot of people knowing things they shouldn't and not knowing things they should. Hey, any idea where Eleanor went? How should I know? I'm too busy to spare any time worrying about anyone else. You look pretty distinctly unoccupied to me right now. Right. I'm busy being unoccupied. You're... what? It's simple. When you have free time, it means you're busy trying to avoid having any business to do. You're too weird for this world, Mogulu. Says the woman with the world's blandest personality. I always figured you'd be the type to take off as soon as things got hairy. So what keeps you here? I am utterly, completely, totally, wholly devoid of anything else to do. Which is to say I'm... Unoccupied. Right, now you get it. Besides, I have to stick around to see how our bet turns out, don't I? I'm with that philosophy. This is a safe haven now. George is probably up here since he's a little liar. No? Back down, checking out the earth pulse. Earth pulse. Earth pulse. I don't know how to say words. Did not hit that. Fucking with the stick to see if the map would pop up. So, don't mind that.
probably either down at the pit or <clears throat> way back at the start. That direction I didn't go this time. I was wondering, what the fuck's the point of this place? Over here, might as well go all the way down. But she said... About what I expected. Probably way back at the beginning, in that first place I went. Get a teleporter? Finally had use for one of those. <sighs> Not your bed, that's my bed. This way, I just didn't touch those because of monsters in the way. There you are, Eleanor. Kamalana's worried about you. You actually came looking for me? Can't say no to a crying child. Ah, uh, indeed. She may be a Therian now, but deep down, she's still a lonely little girl. That's something I've come to realize in traveling with you all. Wretched demons and Therians, even the Malakim who I'd only thought of as tools, they all live and think as humanly as the rest of us. Mm. I was so clueless. I didn't know what demon blight really was, nor what the Abbey was doing. Through it all, I... I knew nothing beyond blind belief in whatever I was taught. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. The coward's path is not that of an exorcist. They may say... I didn't know anything, so I can't be blamed. I can't... I can't live like that. You gonna finally admit what she's doing? I 
think I'll stay here a little longer to cool my head off. Please tell Kamoana I'm all right. Don't stay out too long. The sea breeze can get cold. <sighs> Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. If you got sick or something, Kamoana and Lafisa that would worry. That's all. Thick ass bushy eyelashes in this game. Extra apparent on the ginger. If she doesn't have freckles, she's just a redhead. Not a true ginger. A daywalker. I have something to say. There's something I've been hiding. Ooh, Until did I now. call it or did I call it? I've been acting undercover on a special mission for Lord Artorius. I was to watch over the Malik Lafayette and bring him to Abbey headquarters. So vital was the mission. I was to do whatever it took, even kill my fellow exorcists. You were gonna take me to them. I'm sorry for deceiving you, Lafayette. Originally, I was going to get you to lower your guard, then take you in. However, I no longer intend on following the Abbey's orders. You're turning your back on Artorius? No. I still believe in the sincerity of Lord Artorius. That the world he seeks is one that will benefit all humankind. But nevertheless, I simply cannot bring myself to condone the methods he has chosen to achieve that vision. So... I will help you protect the Therians until I discover the answer I seek. Eleanor! I want to live a life that I don't have to be ashamed of, and to do that, I have to learn the truth for myself. <laughs> so, you live by your emotions after all. Maybe you found your own creed. Welcome to our wonderful world of wickedness! Don't equate us! To act in opposition of one's feelings is to act opposed to reason. You um, never make things simple, do you? Feelings and reason are you very should different be glad things. I don't. Yeah, after all, she's my vessel. In fact, they're often opposites. Yes, yes. Let's score another one for the predictability of this game. Could even so, predict that I think reveal. Our next order of business is to find ourselves another Therian. Well, that's the extent of my insight. Anyone <laughs> got any actual leads? What if we had Eleanor swipe some intel on them from the Abbey? That could work. I don't know. It wouldn't work. Officially, the Abbey still considers her a traitor. So who would leak anything to her? Yeah. Besides, we can't put Lafayette in danger like that. And anyway. Eleanor's terrible at being a spy. Ungracious, but accurate. You know that <laughs> special underground cell from yesterday? I want to go back there. There's something I want to try out. All right, let's go. Run. Laffy said, I must offer you an apology. What for? For spying. I was plotting to take you back to the Abbey. I am truly sorry. It was your mission, wasn't it? Somehow I think I always knew. You... you did? Call it a hunch. Besides, Velvet was really suspicious of you. Whenever you feel you're doing something wrong, you start to sweat a lot. It seemed odd. How long have you known? Ever since you became a vessel for me. I think Velvet knew too. <sighs> That's quite a shock. I feel that I knew too. my role as a spy. It's pathetic. Shameful, really. Well, I think it says something good about you. Huh? Someone who can't lie well seems like a better person than someone who has an easy time of it. Thank you, Laffy said. I think you're the better person here. I wouldn't go that far. Hmm? What are you doing here, Bianfu? I was hoping you'd let me join in! We're in the middle of something important. Please leave us be for now. I'll be quiet. Just let me hang around, all right? Afraid not. Bien. Madame Eleanor is a mealy head. 
she's a what? Laffy said. Thank you. I hope we can stay friends. I hope so too, Eleanor. The exploration of the outer these are going is on. going super well. Yeah. It's all thanks to you guys chipping in. Oh, we haven't done all that much. Well, don't rest on your laurels just yet. Worse things happen at sea, you know. The scouting ship could always get eaten by some giant tentacled horror from the deeps. Danger's a part of the job. Besides, Ifreed's pirates are all about venturing into the unknown. I wonder what's still hidden out there for us to find. Terror Island, for one thing. According to ancient legends, it's an island that moves across the outer seas like a ship. Really? I've never heard of an island like that. Nobody knows if it's real or not, which is exactly why we have to try and find it ourselves. Awesome! I can't wait to get to the bottom of this! Don't get too excited just yet, kiddo. It's good to have enthusiasm and all, but I bet this place is called Terror Island for a reason. I'm not too worried. Like Aizen said, challenging the unknown is what Ifrid's pirates do, no matter what the risk. Ah, <sighs> looks like you've caught the bug too. <laughs> Looks like it. Caught it. He had it from the start. He's obsessed with the compass hey, and the Pienfu, sea. I have a question for you. I know Magilu likes to call herself a witch and all that, but what is she really? The obvious guess would be that she's an exorcist, but I don't think I ever saw her name in the roster. So That's something not different. surprising. She is indeed a bona fide dark witch. I should know. I saw one night just how scary she could be. It's enough to keep you awake at night. It was near the crater of a volcano. Above the bubbling magma sat a huge cauldron. Inside the cauldron, a blood-red liquid stickily simmered, boiling in the hellfire heat. When droplets splattered onto Miss Magilu's cheeks, she just cackled and licked it off. And she kept the cauldron boiling for three days and three nights. What was she making? Strawberry jam. What? What's scary about that? I was just getting to the scary part. Instead of using sugar, she put in soy sauce, cooking wine, and liquor. Soy sauce and strawberries? Is that normal? You wouldn't think so, but that contrasted sweetness, sourness, and saltiness actually makes it taste great. Not that someone like you would understand the appeal. You have to have a refined palate like mine to appreciate it. Wait, I've heard of that. You can boil things in soy sauce and wine to preserve them. When you do it with strawberries, it's called strawberry soup. That's right! Actually... Strawberry soup has sea urchin and abalone, not strawberries. It's just called that because the sea urchin plumps up like berries. And it's not preserved either. Really? Well, I had no idea! Wow, I really liked it too! I wonder if the reason she's never made it for me again is because she realized the mix-up! Now that I think about it, that's not the only thing I liked that she made one time! Like durian jellies and the candied sweet fish too! I think I see what's going on here. What does the food she's made more than once taste like? It's just normal stuff, like what you guys always have. Only a truly scary witch could hide that much cooking talent behind such plain tasting food with no one the wiser. <laughs> I know this smell. Yeah, it's Prince Percival's fragrant wood perfume. When I told him I'd never smelled it before, he put a little on my sleeve to try it out. I love the smell of the royal family's perfume. It's distinct, but not overpowering. It's made from Fandaria trees, conifers that grow in a snowy land. I've noticed that you and Velvet and Mogilu smell nice, too. Do you all wear the same perfume? We do? We don't use that stuff, but maybe you're smelling the soap we use. Oh, can only the royal family wear fragrant wood? No. Some fragrances, including the Fandaria-scented ones, only the royal family can use, but most don't have any such restriction. If they all smell so good on humans, why doesn't everyone use them? You know, I've never thought about that. Why do you think that is, Aizen? People it's don't give a bit a complicated. Some can't to afford explain it? it right, I'd have to start with the history of bathing in Midgand. 
A few hundred years ago, people believed they would die if they took a bath. They were so terrified of baths that they wouldn't even go near one. I can't believe people would be scared of taking a bath. Why would that even happen? Well, at the time, a deadly plague was running rampant, and people thought that it could be transmitted through bath water. Bear in mind that this was all before we had proper plumbing or techniques to purify water. People couldn't just bathe anywhere. Sewers like the one we used to sneak through Logris are a fairly recent construction, only around a century old. Some people even thought bathing at all was unhygienic. Right. As bathing went out of style, the royal family started to use these fragrant woods. Covering up their bad smell with a good one. Yep. As a result, their perfumes used to be far more potent, to the point where you couldn't even tell if it smelled good anymore. But nowadays, nobody actually believes that bathing can make you sick, right? As civilization advanced, oh, lady, plumbing became widespread, and baths themselves became much cleaner fixtures than they used to be. And the fragrant woods fell out of favor because they were no longer necessary, right? To the contrary. As the people gained prosperity, the perfumes became a popular display of wealth. The newfound popularity didn't last long, however, thanks to the propagation of a new disease. One that didn't transmit through baths. Demon blight, you mean? With the rise of demon attacks, life outside the city walls became increasingly difficult. With fragrant woods now harder to come by, the perfumes once again became the domain of royalty. I guess that means that fragrant woods share a long and complicated history with plagues. To cover up the truth of malevolence, the powers that be spread rumors of a demon plague, continuing their time-honored tradition of covering up one stink with another. <laughs> so, what do you think of the perfume? Do you like it? Yeah, it smells nice. But I think I like the smell of soap better. Huh? This island is so amazing! It's far away from any other people and has so much hidden stuff underground! It's such a perfect hideout! Just thinking about it makes me so excited to be here! Yeah, I guess. What's wrong? You were so excited to be here before! Don't be such a drag, Loppy Set! It's just that this used to be a prison. People were brought here to suffer. And be if killed. If you're worried about how I feel, don't be. If I really hated this place, I wouldn't have made it my base. Hell, I was imprisoned here too, but now it's the secret fort I always dreamed of. I still haven't forgiven the guard who ate all those Maron glaces I was sent. I'll let the past be the past. What part of secret fort are you not getting? Yeah. But it can't all be just for fun and games here either. In order to maximize the success of our future battles, we need to maintain and improve this base going forward. Have my attention. This place seems sturdy as it is. Does it really need more work put into it? Nonsense. This place was built to specialize in holding prisoners. We can make it better suit our needs. What are you proposing exactly? Well, I think we need to start with smokescreen generators. They'll be effective against intruders unfamiliar with the layout here. Of course, afterwards, we'll have to clean up all the soot, but still. No thanks. I think we need something to put out fires. The fire at Helavis was really scary. We have Malachim like you who could use water arts, though. If anything happens, you can just put it out. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. What we really need are some secret underground tunnels. If things get too hairy here, we'll need an underground escape route. We can put in hidden doors, and even some fake ones to trick the enemy, too. We have two separate docks. That's good enough. No enemy is going to attack without taking both docks into consideration. That's why we need to build underground tunnels before anything else. But we're on an island. You know, surrounded by water. Where would these tunnels even lead to? Isn't it obvious? We'll dig underneath the sea to another uninhabited island nearby. But there are no other islands nearby. If it means getting my tunnels, I'll build an island too. Are you listening to what you're saying? It sounds like he's daydreaming to me. And what's wrong with having some dreams? This is a great opportunity we have here. You guys just don't get it. It's okay. I get where you're coming from. But they'll never understand. You might as well save your breath.
stupid. Gave me a moment of false hope that there'd actually be some base building. My shopkeeper. through the earth pulse and to a little mystical land. Is that the plan here? So why didn't we do that at one of the other ones we've already been to? We're here. What now? Well, so I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow <laughs> of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except... I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Ethereum will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still... That suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo. It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm. Then let's go Therian hunting. We have an honest-to-goodness lead. Or dishonest-to-badness, in our case. At least they didn't make me walk back. Broke again. Still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No. If it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try Orichalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Orichalcum. That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself, 
but I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of orichalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship, treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even right. true? <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry. Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Komoana is getting weird. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Stop making noises. All right. So our target is an Earth Pulse point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. <laughs> Scout. We got a blacksmith, we have an association with the turtles, we have a pirate crew to get resources and build shit. We could have easily added a base building element. I lost a bet to a young man and he dared me to prove my courage by sailing out to a class 4 island. Now I could handle myself, but man. It ain't fun and games there. I nearly got killed by demons. You actually stepped foot on a class 4 island? Not even. I was still approaching it by ship when this stuff that looked like spider silk started spreading round. These bug-looking demons were using the stuff to try and climb aboard my ship. Damnation! The crew cut those threads as fast as anything, and we got the hell out of there. The whole thing left me bawling. Well... I'm glad to see you made it out safely. I'd suggest not going near there again. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't planning on it. I had enough of that place to last me a lifetime. But it matters. I understand why the Abbey turned this island into a prison. The waters here are filled with rapid sea currents. Make a single wrong turn of the rudder, and your ship will be capsized just like that. Not to mention the fog and all the storms that pass by. It must be nearly impossible to escape. Aye. To get on and off this island, you'd need a vast store of nautical knowledge and a skilled hand. Thanks to your curse, Eisen, we've gotten good enough to handle rough seas like this. The storm that kicked up when we made our escape was huge, and all we had were three novice sailors. Thinking back on it, we had some seriously good luck. Crashed. Our ship was broken beyond repair. The first mate told me we're going to be looking for an Earth Pulse thingy, right? The ship's ready right. to leave whenever. Do you want to depart now? Get a choice of where I go. Still on the rails, eh? So I want to go back and kill that Kraken. It's here. This is the Earth Pulse Point. Nothing but open water as far as the eye can see. Is your Earth Pulse Point down below? Oh. Uh, hmm. Most of this world is covered by ocean, so of course there'd be a lot of Earth Pulse Points in the deep sea. But surely even the Abbey would have a hard time containing Aetherian underwater, right? Looks like this one's a bust, then. Sorry, everyone. Hold on. We've seen a bug therian. You don't think there could be fish as well? You may have a point. I think I have just a solution for this. You do? This. What? what? Don't give me that look. I'll have you know this is Fujibayashi's rod. This baby's nine feet long, made from a single piece of the finest bamboo aged five years, with a slow 60-40 action that almost feels alive when it bends. 
Its exquisitely wrapped handle feels like an extension of your own arm. And just look at that elegant black lacquer finish. It's as perfect a fishing rod as there can be. I'm... I'm sure it's a lovely fishing pole, but... Fishing? Are you sure? This is a Therian we're talking about. All the more reason. Remember who you travel with. Uh, okay? All right, if no one else will, I'm going to veto this fishing idea. Aw, oh, come on, let's give it a shot. Besides, I'm hungry. Even if all we catch is fish, at least we'll have dinner. Mm, I'd love to have me some koi or sockeye salmon. Don't encourage them. How do you attach the hook to the line? Like... this? <laughs> you don't go fishing much, do you? It's just been a while. I used to go fishing with my brother sometimes. This is my first time. Then we can try it together. I'll teach you how it's done. I didn't know you could fish, Eleanor. Yeah, when I was little, old man Tenny taught me. He was from my village. I've caught at least a hundred tree at loaches over the years. Wow, that's a lot of fish. Those two really get along. If I didn't know better, I think she's his sister, not his vessel. Eleanor certainly got Lafayette's number. Better watch out, Velvet, or she'll steal him away. Lafayette said. Let's get the line set up properly. First, you take it and thread it through the hook, like so. That looks hard. Uh, hey. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it with your eyes shut. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Luffy! Huh? You mean me? Oh, um, I was just... Be careful there. Wouldn't want you falling into the water or anything. I'm not a little kid, you know. It's just that Luffy fell in once, a long time ago. Luffy? You mean your younger brother? That's right. You reminded me of him is all. If you say so. Is that all you wanted to say to me? Yeah, that's it. Okay then. I'm going back to fishing with Eleanor. Mm -mm. People aren't as easily swapped in and out as fish hooks, are they? Is that supposed to mean something? Oh, Velvet, uh, you gotta get it a lot tighter than that. Here, let me take a look at it. Huh? Oh, uh... All right. <sighs> Can I have my rod back now? Hey, don't rush me here. If I don't get this squared away now, it'll just cause you trouble later. I appreciate the effort and all, but do you seriously think we'll actually catch a Therian here? Beats me, but the first mate hasn't met a fish he can't catch. Huh. Aizen's really that accomplished of a fisherman? <laughs> Old man Tenny sounds like he was a real goofball. Definitely. He used to say the weirdest things while we'd be fishing just to make me laugh. Like what? Oh, it was all nonsense, but it was funny to me. Silly stuff like... Papero papero pippity poppity poo. <laughs> yeah, that's silly all right. Those two look like they're having fun. Jealousy is weird and creepy. If you truly admired the fishies, you'd never dream of doing this to them. No matter how tasty the bait, it's a poor trade for a barbed hook in the lip and a cruel death in the unforgiving air. Great. I don't admire fish. Fish exist to be caught and eaten, as far as I'm concerned. Can't argue there. Raw, boiled, or grilled with a little salt. You can't go wrong. <laughs> and if they're nothing but food to you, even their wretched squirms of agony can hold a kind of beauty. I think fishing's fucked up. Even if you throw them back, why are you mangling their face for sport? No honey, neither. I'm not a vegetarian, but I've considered it. But, you know, food tastes good. Hey, Eisen, how about a competition? Let's see who can catch the biggest fish. Don't be ridiculous. Fishing is a solitary battle. 
It's about meditation and self-control. Oh, aren't you the philosophical one all of a sudden? <sighs> but I suppose. I can't deny I really want to put this rod to the test. Yeah, I know that feeling. Whenever I find a good sword, there's nothing I want to do more than to swing it. Sure enough. There's just something about good equipment that gets the blood pumping. Yeah. But she said. Although in my case, it's usually more like blood spurting. A bit too much blood either way, if you ask me. Listen, we're fishing no matter what. Wouldn't the competition be better for getting that blood of yours pumping? Fine. You're on. But we both know already how this is gonna end. <laughs> you can plan all the victory speeches you like, but fishing is like life. Doesn't always go the way you think it will. You ready? Let's do this. At what point did the Therian hunt turn into a contest? Hey, Velvet! I've got... This thing could even catch a whale if you wanted to. The rest is up to you. Now get out there and fish up a big one. A Therian, you mean. <sighs> Might as well give it a shot. It's not like anyone else remembers what we're here for. Oh! <gasps> Something's pulling the line! Stay calm. Fishing isn't about strength. It's about timing. Oh, okay. Need strength too. Here it comes. You ready? <laughs> Damn right I am. I'll fillet it before it can even land. If it's a Therian, don't you dare kill it. Now, heave. You charismatic? Well, what do you know? Neither a fish nor a Therian. Well, shoot. Can't eat that. Oh. It looks like it fit you, though, Laffy said. Why don't you try it on? I concur. Maybe it'll bring out his unique personality. My unique personality, huh? See? What did I tell you? It looks great on you, Laffy said. You... you really think so? Yeah. Brings out your special charm, kiddo. Come on, back to Therian fishing. Oh. Hey, you don't need to take it so seriously. I have to catch the Therian. Maybe then Velvet will see me for who I am. Ugh, not a bite. Oh, quit your grumbling. Who was it who said fishing doesn't always go how you think it will? <laughs> Spoken like a true heartless pirate. Oh, hey, I've got something. <sighs> Whoa, looks like I'm next. <sighs> Not a single decent catch. I think it's decent. Huh? Throwing these treasure chests with random things in them in the fucking ocean. <sighs> you found a look all your own. Ah, the vagaries of youth. <laughs> you don't take half measures, do you, kid? Hmm? What's wrong, Laffy said? You look ridiculous. Take that off. Yeah, Stop. put your Norman costume what do you back know on. About me anyway? I I know that looks silly on you. All you know is your Lofi. <laughs> hey, Velvet, something's pulling on your rod. Take it uh, oh. It's a big one. Give it everything you've got. I know what I'm doing. It's... It's a big one, all right, but... A pot. Yay. <sighs> but what's a pot doing out here? 
There's you asked that, but not about it. the treasure chest with the mustache in it. An octopod? I wish they'd stop making those noises. Watch out! They're armed to the squeak, and they're shouting, "Let's squeak them, ring!" Must you? That was a hard one. Not even worth my time. Phew. That was scary. Be more careful before you approach a suspicious object. You think Luffy would have stayed back? That has nothing to do with this. Hold on. There's something else inside. Now we gotta fight the shambling dead? A zombie pod! For a bunch of dead guys, they're awfully, uh, lush. Further support for the healthy octopus diet! This fight is over! An octopus army? A horde of undead? What the hell is this pot? Darian? Magnificent. To think I'd get to see one with my own eyes. Huh? Is there something special about this creepy old pot? <laughs> creepy, you say? That's why these things need to be left to the professionals. Listen and behold. This is none other than a water jug made by the potter Groon during King Clauden's reign. It was a legendary once in a millennium masterpiece but it was lost in the Second Warring States period 200 years ago. Assertive, yet not ostentatious. The piece draws you in with its stately curves and the subtle shimmer of its colors, which belie a hidden savagery. <sighs> Two lectures in one day? <sighs> yeah, he's talking gibberish, but that's men in general, I suppose. The lost glazing technique of the Orosaurin is so vibrant, it looks like it could start moving at any moment. Huh? Oh, look at that. Who would have guessed? Oh, oh, and start moving it did. Look out! The pot's a demon! Who would have saw that coming? No mercy! Wounds I won't heal! Hard to deflect! Slick or pay! Whatever you guys do, make sure you Come don't Come on, let these goddamn demon eyes when I say to do it. That's even worse! Still not letting me. Oh, I did. Never mind. Didn't see it happen. the heels guys Quick 
Stunning me while I'm blocking, that'd be great. Did pop up. Didn't say. Thought I did a perfect job there, but I didn't see a soul pop out. Delay on getting up and why am I so Oh you fucking bitch! Why could I not dodge? Future, like activating that the first time I hit it, that'd be great. I was blocking, but sure. 
floppy set. Thank you. Fuckhead. Shouldn't have read you. That would have been a finisher if Lassa said that you go and fucking take all the souls. I would add one more in there. I refuse to fall here. It's finally decided to behave itself. Wait, Velvet! Don't eat it! It's a pot. I'm not gonna eat it. <sighs> I guess there weren't any Therians to be found here after all. Yeah, if there'd have been any, you'd think all Aizen's Reaper curse would have drawn him out. Oh, so uh, that's why all we caught today were weird, useless things. Right. I forgot about the curse. So all this was Aizen's fault, huh? Funny how quickly you get used to it. Oh, my power didn't end up helping us out at all. Nope. Hmm. But I know you're not the type to give up after a little setback. Isn't that right, Fee? Huh? Fee? It's your nickname. Not a whole lot of thought put into it, but... You're you. You're Fee. Velvet. Fee. I like it. It has personality. Thanks. Of course, if you Lala. still feel like giving up. More no, like his personality. Find us the next Earth Pulse point. Oh, hey. There's something else inside the pot. Calcum? This golden luster, it's... it's Oracalcum! I get it now. This must be where that ship sank all those years ago. The one Kurogane told us about. What a coincidence. Hell yeah! Kurogane might actually be able to make me an Oracalcum sword. Nice find, Aizen. You too, Lafayette. It wasn't easy, but we didn't come away empty-handed. And just getting a chance to fish again was lots of fun. Yeah. I had a really good time, too. Even I was entertained. Especially your little costume show, kiddo. The sun's going down soon. Let's head back to Titania. Better go to base operations, or are you gonna open up the world and let me go where I want? Because I kinda wanna go back to that cave I neglected. I wanna go kill that Kraken. Thought I just had to go a little further to get the ability to jump over shit, but that didn't happen. Should've just went through that dungeon when I had the chance. But been locked out of it ever since. Which is annoying. This game is very annoying on a lot of levels. Hmm. What else do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Warg Forest and Palamedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. 
When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house Aetherian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all. There is no other way to live. R right. I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Struggling to have any kind of an identity. All right. Have you been practicing your dove impression, Velvet? What? Ooh. No. Now, now. A performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. I can afford it. Grub foo. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? Well, I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt. Who melted in the volcano? To focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Lafisette! I spy! I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff to... I spy with my little eye. Something that starts with V. <sighs> okay. Very I'll annoying try. child. Uh, is it... Velvet? <laughs> no. Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Poor V. Hey. What do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse Point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. <laughs> Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your... It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzfamewu Wexov. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine. Just don't forget our mission. Stop doing that. No reply this time either? Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I has got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. And then stuff to Edna. Did, did he just say cute? Help you with something? 
Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might- You didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Much. <laughs> you really didn't read it? N no of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! <laughs> I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything, and it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Really? Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really Hunt. thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please! I'm begging you! Okay then. Moggy. Oh, come on, that's so obvious! Can't you put some heart into it for your dear friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man to you? You're not even trying! Okay, then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure, then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Book skirt. That's not any better, either! Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look, no nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! Yikes! Better watch what we say from now on. Yeah. May I ask you a question? You what? Bet. You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim, and he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there, but it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. <sighs> the Reaper's curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth affinity and my Reaper's curse aren't much different, in that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. One day I'm <sighs> sure you'll fly. So, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. Oh. Huh.
Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. Actually, they said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. Also, octopuses. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helavisian octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, alright? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Hey, we can eyes and send that letter and cooking pot too anyway. I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I, I do not. That's not what I mean. Then pray tell. What do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whoever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh, not what I'd expect, but... No! I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose Prefer that's big. true, but he seems a bit, shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third ballard. Come to think of it... I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. Ridiculous is one of my nicknames. True story. I'm not going to explain why, I'm just going to mention it. It must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? Wanna get That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Aizen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's Curse can stop it. 
fall in well, the ocean. Yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. What? That crow just flew off with the coin. Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it, I can't even win against a crow. Don't sweat it. I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. I don't believe it. Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air. Are you kidding me? Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. Here I go. You gotta be kidding me. Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. I did. Hey, Aizen, is there, uh, anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawk's hunt? What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice-like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She, she says she came up with it by combining Griffin and hawk. <sighs> This is probably the first time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. Good morning. So what are we going to do? Good now. Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep, huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey! Don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me?!
Still can't go back there. Remember where that dungeon was. That pink one there. Did you guys hear? The search party that went to the Laban Tunnel was wiped out by a demon. Really? They were the ones out searching for Count Kapalus, weren't they? You mean the one who managed to get kidnapped? Despite everyone else at his manor, servants and children alike getting killed? You'd think noblemen like that would have some decent exorcists among their personal guard. Suppose he did. But I heard every blade there, sword and spear alike, was found chipped and cracked to hell. Hmm. <sighs> What kind of demon could do that? Who are the Kapaluses? They are one of the great noble lines, on par with Oscar's Dragonia family, and have served Midgand for generations. <sighs> People refer to them as the royal family's hidden dagger. Unlike me, you never hear good rumors about them. They say behind the royal family's glory lies blood and tears shed at the hand of the Kapalus family. But those are just rumors. Although I do know that in recent times, the Count had stood against the rise of the Abbey. I couldn't care less about the whereabouts of some noble, but we should be careful of the demon that took out all those exorcists. Yeah, it sounds like a worthy opponent. Sounds like I came back at the right time and there's something new to be in there. That might be too strong for me. Find out. But I can upgrade my equipment more. I should be stronger if I actually use the upgraded equipment. Got that tendency to use crappy gear. and walk away. Come here. No, don't rub your face on that. Stop. Sorry. <laughs> Rubbing her face on the thing that's holding the microphone, so it might have made some weird noises. I grabbed her. mine now. You can't go anywhere. I'm gonna run away. Feel like being a lap cat right now? Cat is not a lap cat, so it's weird that she's staying here in my lap. I'm not like forcing her. Be a hundred percent. Keep that. Thank 
You gotta stand right in front of the effects I'm trying to look at. There we go. Over there. Have treats. Little fatty. You a little fatty. Find your nail clippers. I know you hit them somewhere. Those claws gotta go, young lady. Can't figure out where the fuck she hit them. I guess it's probably the point of her hiding them. the junk every now and then.
Okay. All right. I'll do the quest I got first, first, because it's probably a lot easier. Plus, if I travel around, that's more chances to get shit from shops. Because, yeah, I need lots of gear now. I really want to go is still locked though. Why is it still locked? Just to piss me off. Go down here. Inventory. They share. I already learned that. I don't know why I didn't remember it. I am the dumb. I'm gonna take a break before I do all this. I've been going at it for a couple hours, I think, right? Let's see. Oh yeah. Two and a half hours? That's long enough. <laughs> 